Hello everyone. This is Rahim. I hope you are doing well and enjoying life. If you would like to follow me on LinkedIn, this is my LinkedIn ID. You can also find me in YouTube with this ID. I'm with you again with another video about 5G and in this video I'll explain 5G new radio dual connectivity concept and the procedure for NR dual connectivity secondary node addition. NR dual connectivity is a 5G connectivity option where the device is using new radio only but with both a master node and a secondary node. In other words, in NR dual connectivity configuration, one GMB acts as a master node and the second one acts as a secondary node. From the control plane point of view, the control plane from the 5G core, I mean end to interface, is terminated in the master node and the master node has a control plane connection to the 5G device via RRC connection. The master node and the secondary node exchange the signaling using XN application protocol, I mean XNAP via XN C interface to each other. From the user plane point of view, the secondary node terminates the user plane from the 5G core, I mean entry interface, and it has a user plane connection to the 5G device both directly and via the master node using the X and U interface. Additionally, the device may simultaneously have a user plane connection to the 5G core directly via the master node. I mean, for the bearers which cannot be terminated on the secondary node, for example, IMS signaling and IMS voice bearer. In typical NR dual connectivity configuration, the master node contains the serving NR cells as a master cell group working in FR1, frequency range 1, and the secondary node contains the serving NR cell as a secondary cell group working in FR2 or millimeter wave. 3GPP specified master cell group as FR1 and secondary cell group as FR2 in release 17 version 3. The 5G device configured with NRDC can use the high band, I mean millimeter wave or FR2 for data transfer for the higher throughput due to more available bandwidth and also sets up the simultaneous voice calls in FR1, I mean below 7 GHz. It could be mid band and low band. A GMB with NR dual connectivity capability, I mean NRDC is operational on that GMB, can request the device to send the capability related to NR dual connectivity. One of the cases that the GMB requests the device to send the capability is during registration process. For this case, an NR dual connectivity capable GMB includes include an RDC flag in 
UE capability in query message to the device. The include NRDC flag is set to true. The device then sends back the response but UE capability information message to the GMB. The device includes supported band combination list in UE and R capability which is necessary for NR dual connectivity configuration to determine whether the device has a suitable coverage for an FR to sell to set up NR dual connectivity the master node sets up A for measurement in the device via RRC reconfiguration message. The master GMB includes measurement object for new radio in RRC reconfiguration message to provide the device with information about the SSP frequency, subcarrier spacing, and frequency band indicator in FR2. The GMB also includes report configuration for new radio in RRC reconfiguration message to specify the criteria for triggering the event. For instance, the type of event, which is here event A4, threshold, time to trigger, and report quantity cell, which are the NR cell measurement quantities, such as RSRP, RSRQ, and SINR, should be included in the measurement report by the device. The device then sends back RRC reconfiguration complete message in response to the RRC reconfiguration message to the master GMB. When the device finds an FR to cell that satisfies the A4 measurement criteria, the UE sends an A4 measurement report to the master GMB, I mean master node. The device includes the list of measured serving NR cells in the RRC measurement report. The fields such as serving cell index, physical cell ID, I mean PCI, and quantities related to the SSPBCH block, SSB, such as RSRP, RSRQ, and SINR. The device also includes the list of major neighbor NR cell in the RRC measurement report, the field such as physical cell ID and the quantities related to the SSPBCH block, SSP, I mean RSRP, RSRQ, and SINR. The master node evaluates the reported NR cell to determine whether it is a valid candidate for setting up NR dual 
connectivity. If the reported cell is suitable, then the master node initiates secondary node addition by sending secondary node addition request message to the target secondary node via XN interface using XN application protocol, I mean XN AP. The message includes configuration of any data radio bearers that are allowed to be secondary node terminated. For instance, from master node terminated DRBs to secondary node terminated split DRBs. The target secondary node will then generate NRRRC reconfiguration message and inside the message there is a reconfiguration with sync informing the device how to access the target NR cell in the secondary node. Now that information will pass via the master node using the cell group configuration, I mean CG config, inside the acknowledgement. Once gets the acknowledgement message from the secondary GMB, the master GMB sends RRC reconfiguration down to the device and inside that message, the RRC reconfiguration with sync from the secondary node is piggybacked. The device will know how to access the target NR cell with RRC reconfiguration with sync and will accept the message by sending RRC reconfiguration complete message and the master GMB will finish the procedure by sending the secondary node reconfiguration message to the secondary node via the XN interface using the information related to NRRRC reconfiguration with sync, the device will run the random access procedure to access the secondary GMB. Here we've got the threshold and hysteresis for event A4 and also our major neighbor quantity which can be based on secondary synchronization, RSRP or secondary synchronization, RSRQ. For convenience, we consider RSRP. The device should consider the entry condition for this event to be satisfied when condition A4-1, as specified here, is fulfilled. The device also should consider the living condition for this event to be satisfied when condition a4-2, as I specified here, is fulfilled. For convenience, two offsets, I mean OFN and OCN, are set to zero. In point A, RSRP of the neighbor and our cell is better than threshold plus hysteresis and this condition remains after time to trigger, so event is triggered in point B. I mean, the entry condition for this event is satisfied, so event A4 is reported to the GMB by the device. In point C, RSRP of the neighbor and our cell is worse than threshold minus hysteresis, and this condition remains after time to trigger so event is triggered in point D. I mean the living condition for this event is satisfied so event A4 is reported to the GMB by the device. Here we've got an area which is covered by the GMB1. The GMB1 contains the NR cells working in FR1 and this is an area which is covered by the GMB2. 
the GMP2 consists of the inner cells working in FR2 or millimeter wave. In the point one, U is RC connected with the NR cell of GMB1 and has got, for instance, enhanced mobile broadband or internet service and also IMS voice service, I mean voice over new radio. As you know, the services from the data network will be exchanged the queues flows within the entry tunnel between the user plane function within the 5G core and the GMB. In this example, UE has got two PDU sessions. I mean, Internet and IMS PDU session. For each PDU session, one specific entry tunnel is needed. The queues flows within the the entry tunnels are mapped to the data radio bearers between the GMB and the UE. The step layer, I mean service data adaptation layer in the GMB is responsible for this mapping. In this example, each queue's flow is mapped to one DRB by a step. I mean, there is a one-to-one -one mapping between queue's flow and DRB. U is moving within the network and enter to the area covered by the NR cell of GMB2. In the point 2, the UE considers entering the condition for event A4 is satisfied, so it sends the report to the GMB1. And once the Evaluation for this event is done by GMB1. The GMB1 as a master node initiates the procedure to add the secondary node by sending secondary node addition request to the GMB2 as a secondary node. The IMS SIP signaling and IMS voice bearers are remain at the GMB1 and the internet bearer is handled as a split bearer by the GMB2 as a secondary node. UE continues moving within the network and in point 3 it detects that RSRP of the NR cell of GMB2 is worse than threshold minus hysteresis for a specified time, so it considers leaving the condition for event A4 is satisfied and sends the report to the GMB1 as master. The master node initiates the procedure to release the secondary node. Thank you for being with me in this video. For more information related to the 5G system, you can also refer to my page in LinkedIn. For more support, please leave your comments under this post and in the end, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.